Secrets Day tutorials. This tutorial is in Dreamweaver using media queries and CSS. And the idea of media queries is a good one in that we can use uh, one page design and serve it up multiple ways for multiple devices. So in other words, we could have one HTML page and multiple CSS documents that control the style and positioning of that of of that page. So we could have one for mobile, we could have one for tablet, let's say, and we could have one for desktop. So today we're going to talk about media queries within Dreamweaver. So let's go to Dreamweaver and a couple things we need to have uh, ready to go. One thing is, is it'd be nice in your files panel to have a folder called media queries. And I would make a header that just for this tutorials that you could have in that folder. So you could, we need to have some sort of image that's going to go in our header. It's not necessary, but it's just going to make things a lot better if you can follow along how I do it. So I have a header here. It's just 800 by 200. It's, not, it's you know nothing fancy. You can make it any size, 960. I wouldn't go probably higher than you know 1,000, 1,200. You could do 960, which is a common size. Um, and this one just happens to be 800 by 200. So you want to have a media queries folder. This is where we're going to put everything in this folder. And then you want to have a header JPEG to go inside our document. Let's create the document right now. So first thing we want to do, or first document, we're going to go to File, New. I want to go to create a new document that is a two-column liquid left sidebar header and footer. This is just, we're going to just use one of these Dreamweaver templates here, the pa blank page HTML templates, to, so, we, so we don't have to do the whole thing from scratch. Uh, doc type, I can leave it XHTML, but I'm going to switch it to HTML5, and I definitely want my CSS to be a new file. We're going to have a couple CSS files, by the way, so I want this to be a new file. I'm going to click Create. First thing it's going to do, it's going to ask me to name my CSS file. I'm going to call this one Main, or I could call it Desktop, which would be smarter. Desktop, and I'm going to put it in the media queries. So I'm going to click Save. And then I want to save my untitled document here. So file save as, and I want to put that in the media queries folder too. And I can call this index or whatever the page name is and click save. Okay, so the very first thing we want to do is we want to change our uh, container. There's some preset you know, settings in this. And I'm going to go into code view. And we're going to go to the container and see what we've got in here. First thing is, well, actually, let's get rid of this logo out of here. Get rid of that. We don't need that. And then design view. I'm going to go to the container in the CSS. So I'm going to go to the desktop CSS. And in the container, I'm going to go down and find that. And I'm going to switch it to 90%. This will just make it easier uh, for screens with smaller devices or smaller screen sizes. 90% just works a little bit better for small devices. So 80 would be fine, but uh, 90 is just better. I'm going to change the max width of this to the size of my header. Now mine just happens to be 800 pixels. Again, it could be 960, it could be 1200, it could be 1000. Whatever your header design is, you might or your container design, maybe you want it to match your header and your container to match. In this case I do. So I'm going to make my max width on there 800 pixels. Okay, so then I'm going to change the minimum width to a little smaller on this. So this is the te desktop version, so I'm going to say I don't want it to get any smaller than, let's say, 760. So I'm going to say 760 pixels on that. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, we can go back and change these in a little bit, but let's, let's start with that. So now what I want to do is I want to go to the back to the source code and inside this header I want to place my document. I'm going to put it in the foreground of the header instead of the CSS. So I'm going to insert my header right here or insert my header image, my JPEG, inside the div header. So I'm going to say insert image and go find my JPEG and choose that. And I'm not going to do the image tag accessibility for right now. I'm just going to click OK. And there we go. And if I go to design view, you'd see that there. Okay, a little Chuck Norris web design thing here for a fictitious movie called Blade Walker. All right. So we've got that. So we've got a 
we've got our header image in here. We want to be able to dynamically size this thing. So what's interesting, there's a little trick that we can do to this. I'm going to open up my properties panel and I'm actually going to take off the height and width of this header. So I'm clicked on it. I'm going to actually take off the height and width. We're going to make the height and width 100% in the code. So I'm going to take off its pixel dimensions. I did that in properties. I just went to properties. See I'm right there and I said height and width and I just take that off. It's not going to delete my image. In fact if I go back to code view I won't see any height and width there and I could have done it in code view as well. So what I want to do is now I want to go to uh, to my desktop CSS and I want to go to where my header is. I want to make a new class on here, a pseudo class. So I'm going to add to this header. So I'm going to say dot header and then a space img. And basically what I'm saying is, hey, any header in my website that has an image in it, so you want to be careful with this. If you only want to do it one time, you probably want to make this a ID or an ID instead of a class. But so th this is a class, so this could be a whole website with multiple pages. Um, so I'm going to say dot header space img. So any image that's inside a header, I'm going to put my declaration tags there, and then I'm going to go down in here and I'm going to say, okay, I want this width of this header to always be 100% wide. So that means it's going to go off the browser's width. So I'm going to say width and semi or a colon and then 100% and then semicolon. So in back in design view, we're not going to see any difference here with this, um, but we'll, we'll see that in a, in a minute. So by removing those height and width attributes again and having a percentage-based value, CSS will size this image dynamically uh, as the width of our page changes. Pretty, pretty exciting on that. Okay, so the next step now is we're going to now add some media queries. Now, what I want to do before I do that is I want to save a couple CSS files into my folder just to get them ready. I think, I think it's easier to do it that way, to, to have some blank CSS documents ready. So I'm going to say File, New. Uh, I'm going to go to CSS here and just click Create. So I'm going to say Blank Page, CSS, click Create. And this one I'm going to title Tablets or tablet. Again, the name is completely up to you. and I'm going to save it in my media queries folder. And I'll leave that open. That's fine. And then I'm going to go to File New. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to click Create and call this one Mobile. So File, Save As. And I'm going to call this one Mobile. And click Save. So they're all going in my media queries folder. Okay, That's important. Okay. So now I'm back here. I'm going to click Save, Command S, and just save what I've been doing. Um, and now I want to go into the Media Queries dialog box. So I'm going to go to Modify. And down here, we've got this new one in CS 5.5 Media Queries. So here I go. I've got this document, uh, this dialog box open. And I want to ask me do I want to write Media Queries to a site wide file? Yes. This would be great. I could also do to this document, to the main document. And so that's an option as well. But I'm gonna, this is kind of nice to be able to do this here because you can always then go in and, and, and um, work on that file specifically. So you'll see what that file looks like in a second. It's gonna be its own standalone CSS document. So I'm gonna click site wide media queries. I'm gonna specify what I want this to be. So I'm gonna uh, pick media for this one. I'm going to go I'm going to call this one media. So once I get in here, this is going to be again a separate file, separate from the ones that I just made. So I don't want to use an existing file. I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call this media. And then I'm going to save it in my folder here. So I'm going to say save. And no, I'll call it media here as well and save it in this folder and click save see if that works right. This is the file that usually kind of messes things up a little bit in this uh, in this procedure. I'm going to click OK. So it's saying, hey, make a media file that's going to that's going to hold the different documents or it's going to refer to the different documents here. OK, I want to keep this force devices to report their actual width here. I like that being checked. And then I'm going to go down here and I'm going to create a couple 
uh, descriptions here for my media query. So the first one's going to be desktop. That's the one we're working on right now. And on this one, my of course, my desktop one, I want to have the max width. I only actually need to do the minimum width on this one. So my minimum width, if I remember correctly, was 760 pixels. And I'm going to use an existing file. We already made this, but we already have this file open. So it's called desktop CSS. There it is. I'm going to click choose. Okay, so that's that one ready to go. Now I'm going to make my tablet. So I'm going to click this little plus button here, and that's how I make a new media query. I'm going to call this one tablet. And for the tablet, I want to have a minimum size and a maximum size on this one. So my minimum width is going to be 321. This will get us above mobile devices. Um, and so instead of 320, which would be, the, would be the mobile device smaller than 320, this will get us above the mobile devices at 321. And again, these, these, these sizes can change. We'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. And then I want my maximum width here to be uh, 7, well, my uh, minimum width of my desktop is 760. So I can say my maximum width on here is 759. I could do that. And I'm going to go use an existing file right here. So I've got CSS file, use existing file. I'm going to go find the tablet CSS that I made right there. Click choose, click and don't click OK yet. I want one more to do, and I want to go to mobile in my description. And then on the mobile, I want to have for, for this one, I just need to have the max width of 320 because there is no minimum. Well, I could make a minimum width if I want, but I'm going to do max width of 320. We'll make the minimum width back in the CSS document. Uh, we don't need to really make it here, but we need to make the max width, and it's got to be less than the tablet size of 321. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Okay, so I'm going to use an existing file again. I'm going to go browse for that. And there's my mobile device CSS. And click OK. So now all of that that we just did was all put into this document right here. Media.css. Look at that. It's got all three of my files. My desktop, my tablet, my mobile. And if I go back to the source code, Look at how uh, Dreamweaver puts in, uh, first of all, for this page, for my main HTML page, it's linking to the desktop file, which is good. And then it's also linking to the media.css file that we just made. So that dialog box that we just went through is what created this media.css file. And this being an extra file is pretty good because we can e easily go back in here and change any of these dimensions if we want to. If we say we want to target a tablet that's a little bit bigger, we could have multiple tablets, by the way, and you could chart, you could, you know, target different things, different sizes, depending, and also when devices change their size, when a new iPhone comes out and its resolution changes, you can change the mobile CSS. This is a pretty small one right here. That's for pretty small smartphones, but um, that so that would be the one we'd really definitely want to change quite a bit. All right, so we've got a bunch of files ready to go here. Um, in part two of this tutorial, we're going to start doing the CSS code. So that was part one, which just kind of set our files up. And in part two, we're going to start designing in here uh, a couple different pages so we can um, see the changes being made. All right, thanks for watching and look for part two.